Hello, my name is Leon Johnson from Asset Optimization Consultants. I have been providing risk-based inspection, RBI, program implementation, management, and training services for over 20 years. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes discussing how to choose a risk methodology. In this video, we will look at comparisons of different RBI risk assessment approaches as described in API 580. We'll look at some commonly available risk methodologies and software for RBI. And we'll talk about things to consider when choosing an RBI risk methodology and software. When implementing a risk-based inspection program, once you've established your goals and objectives and selected the equipment to be included in your program, you will need to select a type of RBI assessment. RBI assessments can range over a spectrum from qualitative to more quantitative. In the graphic shown here, qualitative assessments are typically quicker to implement, but will not have the repeatability of more quantitative RBI approaches. Let's now look at each of these different approaches in more detail. A qualitative risk analysis uses subject matter experts and experience to assign broad categorizations of probability and consequence of failure. The probability and consequence values are typically determined in collaborative meetings with personnel knowledgeable about the equipment's design, processes, maintenance and repair history, and operating history. This risk matrix illustrates an example of broad categories that could be used to define probability of failure and consequence of failure with minimal quantitative data to classify risks as low, medium, or high. In this example, probability would be estimated based upon the failure history of the equipment or similar equipment being evaluated. And the consequence would be classified based upon injury severity if a leak caused by damage mechanisms were to occur. Using this example qualitative methodology shown here, if you are expecting to have a failure caused by damage mechanisms within the next year, and that loss of containment might result in a lost time injury or injuries, then the risk would be classified as high as identified by the blue dot on the risk matrix. A quantitative risk analysis uses logic models to calculate probabilities and consequences of failure. This data-driven approach requires more detailed numeric data to calculate probability and consequence. While a quantitative risk analysis is more time consuming, it is also more repeatable and the results provide more discrimination for prioritizing inspections based upon risk. Another benefit is the ability to compare risk results for similar equipment or process units. Quantitative risk analysis typically requires dedicated RBI software applications to facilitate the calculation of risk. In this example risk plot shown, the probability and consequence are represented by numeric values for failures per year and safety affected area. Using this quantitative example RBI methodology, if you had an equipment component with a failure frequency per year of 0.1 and a safety consequence area of 10,000 square feet, as shown by the blue dot on the risk plot, then the safety risk could either be defined numerically as the product of those two numbers, or 1,000 square feet per year, or it could be classified as a medium high risk. A semi-quantitative risk analysis includes aspects of both qualitative and quantitative analysis. It is designed to obtain the benefits of both. Less time is required for data collection and analysis than a more quantitative approach. And inputs are a mix of numeric and qualitative inputs. An example of numeric inputs would be corrosion rates, while qualitative inputs into this methodology might be things like coating or insulation condition. The results are usually given in consequence and probability categories, but numeric values may be associated with each category to permit the calculation of risk and the application of appropriate risk acceptance criteria. In this example risk matrix, the probability categories range from one to five and the consequence categories range from A to E. If you had an equipment component with a probability category of two on this risk matrix and a consequence category of D, then the risk could be expressed by combining them, or 2D, or you could call this a medium risk. Software is commonly used to perform RBI assessments for several reasons, including providing a place to enter, retain, and retrieve inputs used to assess risk. Software facilitates the calculation of probability and consequences of failure. It provides a place to document and reference assumptions made 
in the RBI assessment. Software also can facilitate the risk-based inspection planning process. While I cannot discuss every available RBI software solution, here are a few that we are familiar with. This table categorizes these offerings as either qualitative, semi-quantitative, or more quantitative, since most have at least some qualitative inputs. I have limited the more quantitative category to only include software that can perform API 581 risk analyses. Also, note that this table only identifies standard or out-of-the-box risk methodology. Many of these software applications can be used to configure RBI methodologies to meet customer-specific needs. All Assets from Lloyd's Register includes a semi-quantitative RBI methodology that is well-established and has been in use in multiple industries for over 20 years. API RBI from Equity Engineering includes a fully compliant API 581 RBI methodology. APM from GE Digital includes an asset criticality analysis module that can be used to perform qualitative risk analyses and semi-quantitative and more quantitative API 581 analyses can be performed using APM's risk-based inspection module. PCMS software includes a semi-quantitative RBI calculator, which is based upon API 580, 581, and Tishuk. This software application also supports a qualitative RBI approach. RBI for SAP from Ascent includes a semi-quantitative RBI plus methodology, as well as a methodology to perform API 581 risk analyses. Now that we have reviewed the different RBI methodologies and identified some available RBI software solutions, let me spend a few minutes discussing how to choose an RBI methodology. This diagram displays some characteristics of RBI assessments ranging over a spectrum from qualitative to more quantitative. Data required. More detailed information and data are needed for a more quantitative RBI approach in order to provide inputs for the risk models. If availability of data is an issue to you, then you may want to choose a more qualitative approach. Time, cost, and resources. Since the data collection effort can be 50% or more of an RBI assessment, resources, time, and cost will increase with more quantitative approaches. Conservative results. Since you're using less inputs and more judgment, a qualitative risk assessment will generally have more conservative results. Repeatability. Because they rely on more numeric inputs and less on expert judgment, more quantitative RBI methodologies are usually more repeatable. This is important when updating risk when changes occur. Qualitative RBI requires a higher level of judgment, skill, and understanding than a more quantitative approach. Qualitative RBI can be an effective screening tool for quickly identifying units and equipment with low risk, and then more detailed analyses can be utilized for higher risk items. If you would like more information on this topic or other asset integrity topics, please visit our website or email us. Thank you. Thank you.